Role Relations Jennifer Greenberg Revising History The starting point of the work Revising History by Jennifer Greenberg consists of historical photographs from America in the 1950s and 1960s. In these photographs, the American artist has replaced the central female figure with a photo of herself. She also adds subtitles to the photos, whose irony counteracts the glamorous surface aesthetics of the photographs. The photo series evokes a past we think we know. The settings, beauty contests, parties, dance events, we know from movies, advertising, pop culture. The aesthetics of this era is still seductive, but it is just as deceptive. It belies the fact that behind the sophisticated facade of glamour and beauty lie discrimination and gender inequality. To be successful, women have to be glamorous, sexy and beautiful. Otherwise, regardless of their personal skills or qualifications, they have no chance of social and professional recognition. Revising history opposes this discriminatory view. The photos we see are double fake. They show a world that never existed. And Jennifer Greenberg fakes this illusory world again. She takes on the role of the protagonist and gives her an expression that clearly speaks out, I am much more than what you see here. What narratives about women do these photos from post-war America convey to this day? How do we record our personal memories contributing to the construction of a collective history? These are the questions Jennifer Greenberg's work raises. Sila Klenjanski Reminiscence of being a woman The Hungarian photographer Sila Klenjanski uses the artistic means of photography to examine the role of women in Western society. In the series Reminiscence of Being a Woman, she deals with the objectification of the female body. To this purpose, Sila Klenjanski looks at the situation of the woman in the domestic environment and the tasks she has to fulfill there. Her photographs are compositions of the female body and objects that form the situation as a housewife and mother. Sila Klenjanski develops a thoroughly humorous symbolism for the recurring tasks of the household. The repetitive character of housework dissolves the boundary between subject and object. The woman loses her individuality. 
Her body becomes an object that fulfills a practical function. But the objects transform as well and in their turn become parts of a female body. The fact that we do not see the woman's face in the photos is not accidental. Zilla Klenjanski does not want to tell a personal story, but to reveal mechanisms that are universal to the functioning of Western European societies. In the end, as one could also understand the serious reminiscence of being a woman, the objects have completely assimilated the woman. She has disappeared. Pixie Liao Experimental Relationship In a photo series, Experimental Relationship, New York-based artist Pixie Liao explores the possibilities of what a heterosexual relationship might look like beyond predetermined norms. Pixie Liao was born in Shanghai, China. In her country of birth, she says, a strict definition of roles is the order of the day. In a relationship, the woman is subordinate to the man. In the photo series, Experimental Relationship, which Pixie Liao began in 2007 and on which she is still working today, she reverses these traditional role relationships. Her husband, Moro, who is also her partner in the photo series, assumes classical female poses in the pictures, poses undressed, or takes on the role of a male muse. Not only the relationship between power and sexuality is negotiated in the photo series. The cultural background of the couple, Moro is from Japan, also plays a role. The photo Homemade Sushi, from 2010, for example, picks up on a trend that was on vogue in Japan that year. Men ate sushi from a woman's naked body. But Pixie Liao doesn't want just to swap roles, she wants to try out new ones. As conjoined twins or as equals. It was only in a foreign country, in the US, far from family and friends, that she felt free enough to develop this work. Where this heterosexual couple and their relationship will develop, the author has no firm idea. It is an experiment. But as a snapshot in this process, one might note, for a man, it can be desirable to find a woman you can rely on, as the title of this photo suggests to us. Youth and Gender Holly McNish or blue. Holly McNish is a British poet. She closely observes and translates into language the clichés that society ascribes to our children in the definition of gender. Pink or blue. Pink or blue? Pink or blue? Go. Baby grows for blue with robots on. Baby grows for pink, no robots on. Baby grows for pink with flowers on. Baby grows for blue, no flowers on. Little pink picks a daisy chain. Great. Little blue picks a daisy chain. Gay. 
Little blue climbs a tree. Strong boy. Little pink climbs a tree. Tomboy. Pink falls down. Pink is given more hugs. Pink tears are loud. Blue tears must man up. Grow some bollocks, toughen up. Don't be such a girl, Blue. Now blue hair is cut short. Pink hair is let long. Pink is given toy dolls. Blue is given toy guns. Pink is told to be cute. Blue is told to be bigger. Pink shoes, no grip. Blue shoes, no glitter. Now blue legs start growing hair and pink legs start growing hair. Blue is told it's manly. Pink is told to shave theirs. Blue is shown as blood. In action, films, fights, pride. Pink starts bleeding every month. Told blood, shh, shame, hide. Pink discovers lust, wrong. Blue discovers lust, nice. Now blue is called a player, but pink is called a skep. Pink is told they glow, but blue is told they sweat. Blue is told they wank, pink is told they sin. Or blue is called a pussy, pink is called a bitch. Now pink is told to be a lady, do not spit, swear, smell. Blue is told to be a man, do not cry or ask for help. Blue is told to man up, pink is told to make up. Blue is told to stay strong, pink is told to stay young. Blue is told to get rich, pink is told to want kids. Blue is told they mansplain, pink is told they gossip. Blue is told they're bosses, pink is told they're bossy. Blue is given breakdowns, pink is given Botox. Cunnilingus is censored more than rape scenes or blowjobs. Blue is told, this makes a man. Pink is told, this makes a girl. Babies born in naked flesh, welcome to the world. Sandra Stein Mädchen, Girls For more than 20 years, Sandra Stein has accompanied various girls on their way to adulthood. Many of them live in Germany. Some girls have been photographed only once, some others Sandra has already been accompanying for many years, possibly half of their lives, such as twins Polina and Jenny. She met the girls when they just arrived in Germany at the age of 12 and she has photographically documented their life over the years. The images seem very familiar, unobserved, natural, sometimes merging or contrasting the background. It's as if I was photographing myself in different guises in these shots, Sandra says of her approach. The girls interest me simply because I can identify well with them, says the artist. Especially at this age, in this particular time of transition from a child to an adult. It's like a rite of passage that you can witness at all times. Live with all the fears, uncertainty, but also with anticipation, joie de vivre, courage and curiosity. The stages of transformation that Sandra's sensitive portraits communicate to us. When we look at these portraits, We remember the moments when we were not yet one with our body and the proportions did not seem to fit. We ask ourselves, what story do the girls want to tell us? How do they feel in this important phase of transformation from a child to an adult? What fears and hopes do they carry? How will they change over the years? Anna Ehrenstein Tupamaras Technophallus Anna Ehrenstein likes it shrill and crazy. Her world is full of provocative explosions. She is the representative of the young generation of artists who not only live in their geographically fixed places, but also in the cloud. Born in Albania, and raised in Germany, she travels a lot and discovers inspiration on the other side of the globe as well. 
her visual language is partly reminiscent of video games and the latest social media trends. The science and technology database we have accumulated over the history of modern day human civilizations is reinstalling currently. Anna Ehrenstein's current work, Tupamaras Technophallus, was created with the Colombian artist collective House of Tupamaras. The work consists of 360 degrees video assemblage and sculptural works of extended photography. The surrealist documentary video work is set around an abandoned airplane in Colombia and reflects socio-political issues through dance and conversation. Starting from the actual local conditions of a periphery in Bogota, the setting transforms more and more towards an alternative living space that anticipates a reality in its virtual form. The group House of Tupamara shows the fluidity of the sexual as a floating state of being. The performance thereby offers a possibility to change within different states and thus to reinvent oneself again and again. In the project Tupamaras Technophallus, the artist takes up the situation of historical marginalized subjects, such as trans women or men in drag, in order to draw attention to the exclusion of these communities from, for example, the discourse of technology and algorithms. Una especie de utopía hacia el querer ser maricón sin ningún prejuicio y sobre todo como una necesidad que nos como que nos salía a la hora de bailar un poco. Yo creo que cuando nosotros empezamos a pensar el colectivo Mother Francesca Magistro You are here to replace me My mother was in another city where my grandmother was operated on and in the hospital for a long time I was in Turin with my father and my little brother. At that time I was 10 years old and I now realize that I was the mother of my little brother who was nine years younger than me. And like a southern cliché, the fathers don't play a role in raising children. So I was the one who cooked. And suddenly my life is missing not only my grandmother who was a mother to me, but also my mother. And I had to play the mother for my little brother. You are there to replace me, the mother wrote, and for sure I was not at all satisfied with this. It was a double burden for me. Later, when Francesca Magistro became a mother herself and lived with her family in Germany, at some distance from her parents, she found her mother's letter again. She finds again the emotional access to the words that seemed incomprehensible to her at the time. Alongside with this, photography for her strongly influences and interprets memory and also offers a source of strength and inspiration as an artist and mother. Playing with her own children and the camera reveals to her that she can be a child again. The pictures of her childhood show her longing for the time with her grandmother. 
In the work, she puts four generations in relation. Mika Sperling, Mother Tongue. Sperling, Sparrow, a family of birds. This is how the artist and young mother presents her family as a metaphor. Five doves meet on a German fir tree. The image is titled Family Tree a symbolic image for her own family, which has roots in different parts of the world and has built a life of its own in Germany. The young family that manifests itself through the birth of the first child, and it's fragile like eggshells and undefined and changeable like ice cubes. The artist finds her topics in her own biography and the people and relations around her. In her work, Mother Tongue, Mika Sperling explores the connections between mothers and their children. The pictures describe a relationship of trust and everyday life, Sperling has achieved over the many years of her family relations. The curlers raise the question of what connects her to the mothers. Her curls are natural. The mother's curls have been painstakingly untwisted for years. What will she pass on to her daughter? The frock brings in a new perspective of her own, which she rediscovered through her daughter and also takes up in her artistic work. Lebohang Kanye Kele Falaka, her story. Lebohang Kanye grew up in a township in the southeast of Johannesburg in South Africa. When she lost her mother as a young woman, she lost her link to her extended family as well. Lebohang reenacts in her work. Ke Lefa Laka, not only her mother's story, but also that of the whole family, which is ultimately a mainly female family story. The mothers usually take on the role of caretakers and heads of the family. They can also be seen as archivists of family histories. In the first part titled Her Story, Realized in 2013, three years after the death of the mother, the artist uses found family albums and performative elements of photography. She locates the places where the pictures of her mother were taken and wears her mother's clothes. Working in a factory, she would put on her Sunday best when she was posing for the local professional photographer at family gatherings. With the work, the artist not only brings to life the ghostly quality attributed to photography, but also the ghost of her mother. And in another scene, the image montages of her and her mother create a fictional biography in which Le Bohang becomes her mother's ghost. Le Bohang sees herself in a strong relation and context to her family history. Through the use of oral and visual tradition, 
the work resists the loss of identity and history. Social and Political Engagement Ulla de Venter Birds The birds in the cage A symbol of the beauty we keep in the cage, like our personal possession, just to look at it. The artist Ulla de Venter filmed these bird cages in Cuba. The artist says Obviously, this metaphor raises questions about the relationship between the observer and their object of desire. With these very simple and codable strategies, I aim to give viewers from various backgrounds access to the work. Dina Oganova Hashtag Me Too I am not sure if this is sexual harassment or not. He did not even touch me. But touching is not the only way of harassing someone, right? Usually I finish my work quite late and if it's winter time, I walk home in complete darkness. That's why I always take the same path. Lights come from the windows and it's not so scary. One evening when I was on my way, I heard somebody calling my name. First I was a bit afraid. It was dark and I couldn't see the face. Then I recognized my neighbor. It's me, he said. Why are you walking alone in this darkness? Wait for me, I'll come with you. I stopped, but he did not change the place Standing sided to the shadows, he was looking at me and making strange moves. Then he turned, zipped up his trousers and headed towards me. I felt so stressed, as I remember I even stepped backwards. What's wrong? he laughed. Did I fuck you? No, I was just jacking off. I ran, not looking back. Being harassed is a universal and timeless problem. The difference is sometimes how it is dealt with in different countries. While for some years in the West it has been openly spoken about, written and discussed, in many other countries, to a large extent also in Georgia, the topic has been suppressed from the public and tabooed. Women there still have little opportunity to make their voices heard in this regard. In society, sexual harassment is often seen as the fault of the woman, the victim. According to the motto, it's your own fault if you put on a short dress and look good on the top of that. In addition, it is due to the poor sexual education and taboo communication on the subject that many young women are not sure where the boundaries are and that they have a right to defend themselves and say no when these boundaries are crossed. This is exactly the issue that the Georgian photographer Dina Oganova is dealing with in her home country. For her work, Hashtag Me Too, starting in 2015, she spent a lot of time and effort to find women of different ages who were not yet ready to talk openly about it and show their faces, but at least had overcome themselves to tell their story in the familiar environment of the photographer. This is how this multi-layered work was created. The faceless portraits, the pictures of the crime scenes, and also the fabric of the women's clothes they had worn that day. <laughs>
Cecilia Malik. 365 trees. The images of the Polish artist Cecilia Malik look like something out of a fairy tale. Colorful, enchanted, playful, magical. 365 Trees is the title of the work that also launched her career as an environmental activist in 2009. Inspired by Italo Calvino's book, The Baron in the Trees, Cecilia Malik climbed a tree every day and had her picture taken. In her commitment to the environment, she always negotiates the cause of women, because there are parallels between the exploitation of nature and the oppression of women, according to Cecilia Malik. The patriarchal capitalism that characterizes our societies aims to objectify both nature and women in order to exploit them. Cecilia Malik counters with the poetic power of her images. Blue butterfly wings against construction projects. Nursing mothers on tree stumps to protest the arbitrary cutting down of trees. At the same time, she uses this action to advocate for breastfeeding children in public. With Six Rivers, Cecilia Malik pays tribute to the rivers that flow through Krakow and draws attention to the negative consequences that their straightening has on the environment. In another action, women of all ages and backgrounds have come together to advocate for the preservation of the natural course of the Vistula. Grandmothers, mothers, daughters, sisters, daughters-in-law, cousins and friends fight as river sisters for an intact environment and for being recognized as women with equal rights. Thank you.